If you ever wanted to learn how to drive a combine, well today's your lucky day. Many of you have been asking me in the comments section to talk about what some of the controls do in our combine and what some of the weird beeping noises mean that come from the screen in the corner of our cab. So today's the day. Climb up the ladder with me for a full cockpit tour of a John Deere S660 combine. Hey there, thanks for turning down my road. If this is your first time here, my name's Carl, and you've picked the perfect time of year to come ride along. There's nothing like fall harvest in Iowa. My little brother and I both work for local farmers full time, but we both also farm together with our cattle herd and our hay operation. Everybody's involved, from the smallest to the biggest. If you don't have the joy of farming yourself, I'd love to help you experience it through this channel. Whatever your background, you found the right place. This is Dodge Brothers Farm and Ranch. All right, so first let's just start off with the controls that we are using all the time in the field to operate the combine. The most important control by far is this stick right here. This is the hydrostat. It's in essence the same way that you drive a lawnmower. If you want to go forward, you push it forward. If you want to go backward, you pull it backward. And your speed is simply controlled by how far forward or how far backward you pull the lever. Next we have our engine speed. We only have three predetermined engine speeds in the combine. There's low speed, which is about 1200 RPMs. Medium is approximately 1700. And then full throttle is about 2360 RPMs. These two yellow switches control the header and the separator in terms of turning them on and off. And then all of the switches on the front of the hydrostat control are within easy thumbs reach and control everything that you need to operate while you're actually harvesting. These one through three switches are your header height. If I engage the header control, the number one switch is raised, the number two is down, and number three I've got set to be all the way down. If I want to run the snoots just touching the dirt to pick up down corn or to harvest really short corn, I run it on the number three setting. And then number one, of course, raises it back to the up position for crossing waterways and turning around. This auto steer resume button right here will turn your auto steer function back on as you're headed into the row. This is really handy when you're combining beans as halfway through the turn I like to push the auto steer button and it guides you right into the next pass. I don't really use it as much on corn because you can just pull into the next row and then double click the number two button and that will automatically engage the auto steer function. Then you have your two four-way switches in the middle of the control. This is manually lowering and raising the header. Like if you want to raise it all the way up to go down the road, this is the switch that you'd use to do that. You can also manually tilt the header to the right and to the left with this switch. And then this switch controls your header speed. Up is faster, down is slower, and you have to have the header running to change the header speed. And right and left on this switch, when you have the corn head on, actually opens and closes your deck plates. If you push it to the right, it closes your deck plates. If you push it to the left, it opens your deck plates. And this is a really handy control to have when you have really big stalks and really big ears, you'll open them up a little bit. When you have really small stalks, short to the ground and tiny little ears, you want to close it up all the way to make sure you don't have any ears slipping through the deck plates or shelling a lot of corn off of the ears on the head and dribbling it all over the ground. This button on top is your emergency stop switch. If you're going along and you see some obstruction that you're about to take into the combine, you don't have time to reach down and shut these switches off, you can hit this emergency stop switch really quick while your hand is on the stick and hopefully prevent taking that object into the combine. This switch right here extends and retracts your unloading auger. Finally, this yellow button right here turns on and off your unload auger. All right, let's go ahead and show you how these operating controls work. First, I'll put the engine into medium speed and I'll start the separator first. 
which is the rotor and the fan and the sieves shaking up and down and all of the internal components that separate the grain and then clean it and put it in the tank and then I'll start the header. Run the engine up to full speed and let's harvest some corn. As I pull in, I'll lower it down with the number two button. And then I'll double click the number two button to engage the auto steer function. This corn head is actually equipped with row sense, which is just a set of feeler switches in between a couple of snoots that feel the row going past and adjust your auto steer to follow the row perfectly. This allows the combine to drive much more accurately than if it were simply operating off GPS signal alone. This machine is also equipped with automatic header height control as well as contour master. On the corn head, there are three switches that hang down underneath the snoots and touch the ground all the time, and they control the height of the header. And the reason that there's three is so that if you're going over a contour, and the right side needs to be higher than the left side or vice versa, it can actually tilt the header automatically to follow the contour of the ground. These three buttons are for shifting your transmission speed into low, medium, and road speed. And then this is your on-off switch for your parking brake. This black rotary dial right here is your speed for your reel on the bean head, so it doesn't really apply to anything that we're doing with corn today. And then this rotary dial is your header height adjustment. So when I have the number two selected and the header is down, I can rotate this to the right to carry it a little bit higher or rotate it to the left to carry it a little bit lower. And that works the same for your up position and for your all the way down position. Back here we've got our radio controls, our hazard lights for going down the road, our rear lights and our header lights, climate control, this is really cool, you can actually set the temperature that you want it to be in the cab. These are all the shortcut buttons for the menu options on the display. But we have a touch display in here, so I prefer to just use the touch screen instead of using this clumsy menu system over here with the rotary dial and the rubber buttons and everything. All of these buttons right here have to do with setting the machine, which is what we're going to do right now. So let me go ahead and show you how it works. So the first thing I'm going to do is raise the chopper up and disengage it to get it out of the way. Now we're just going to combine a little bit and see what kind of a job we're doing. When you're setting the combine, you want to go ahead and simulate the speed that you would normally be harvesting at to try to keep all the conditions the same. The reason that we picked the chopper up and disengaged it, we want to leave all the residue in a small swath down the middle of the combine so that we can get out and sift through it and see if we're doing a good job getting all the kernels off the cobs and if we're not being too aggressive and breaking all the cobs up and I'll show you what I mean here in a second. So we're going to go ahead and stop and let the combine clean out. And go see how we did. I like to see whole cobs. That's a sign that we're not being too aggressive on the cobs. And I also like to see that they're all cleaned off and that there's no kernels left on the cobs. Because kernels left on the cobs is corn left in the field. And we want to get all the corn that we can out of the field. Now I do see some corn on the ground here in different spots. 
that's more than I like to see. But you do have to remember that we're combining eight rows and we're leaving all the residue in a narrow band across two rows. So if this was all spread out, it would not be quite as much as it looks like it is here. But I still want to do something to address the issue. First, we're going to see if that corn on the ground is coming from the head or if it's coming out the back of the combine. So let's go look up right behind the head. We don't appear to be leaving much with the head, so it is coming through the back of the combine. So we're gonna check up behind the rotor beater and see if there's kernels sitting up there. There are a few up there, so I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my rotor speed and give it enough time to sift through the corn before it comes out the back. So the way we adjust that rotor speed is we go ahead and engage the separator, run it up to full throttle, then we push the rotor speed button, and we just raise it a few RPMs. I'm gonna put it at 400 and see how that does. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and combine a little bit further and check again. So there's no more coming over the rotor because that shelf is clean of corn, which means that any corn that's on the ground now is coming over the chaffer and the sieve, which is that long shiny area with the little fingers that bounces up and down and sifts out the grain from the chaff. So I'm going to go ahead and open those just a little bit until we start to get some trash in our hopper and then I'll close them down just a little bit more, check it again and we should be good to go. So we just push the chaffer button and I'm gonna open that to about 20, and then push it again, and it cycles to the sieve. And I'm gonna go ahead and open that to about nine. All right, here we go again. So it's still a pretty clean sample, but if you look around, you'll start to see some small bits of cobs and some little bits of corn stalk. Much better. So a good way to think about this is, since there's 85,000, approximately 85,000 kernels per bushel, and there's 43,560 square feet in an acre, it would take two kernels per square foot on the ground to equal one bushel per acre of loss. However, we're concentrating eight rows worth of material into two rows to look at on the ground. And as you can see, there's not that much there. Let's talk about some of the noises coming from this screen while we're operating. If you look at this number on the right hand side of the screen, it's counting down the estimated distance until the end row when we need to take control and turn around. That beep and the yellow indicator means that we're under 75 feet and when we get to the end it will turn red and beep twice. The faint beeping that you hear as we're driving down the end rows indicates that we're crossing over a new GPS line every time it beeps. These other two sounds that you regularly hear have to do with engaging the auto steer and disengaging the auto steer. There's a triple beep that happens when you engage the feelers for the auto steer and then a double tone that happens when you take control by grabbing the steering wheel. So, I hope you've learned a thing or two today, and I hope you're not quite as intimidated by the cab of a modern combine 
as you may have been before. Thanks for riding along, and we'll see you next time.